no way. They've beaten the Giants. We saw them dominate the Giants here. And, uh, you know, they, they look like... Uh, I know the Grand National was yesterday, Dave, but if you're betting on a horse, that you must have good odds on Bristol to do well in the playoffs. Well, of course, Giants uh, did defeat Bristol down at their court, and that's Tuesday night's game. Another trip down to Bristol. Yeah, and it seems a long time since we've been here, and one of the guys on the ball now who's uh, picked it up as he moves to the hoop and passes and dunks it, you know, is, uh, is Jack Hudson. You know, he stepped up the pace and playing excellent basketball. And he's out on the, the starting five for, uh, I think for the first time this evening. Giants have out Artisan, McKnight, Clark, Anderson and Hudson. And for the Surrey Scorchers, Macklemore, Thomas, Raftopoulos, Ogundembe and Dan Kodo. Yeah, and Giants looking bouncy in that early going as, you know, Hudson attacks the dunk from Artisan and then the, the dagger three from McKnight. Good start by the Giants. Giants slow to start on Friday night against the Leicester Riders. Leicester nine up before the Giants got off the uh, got on the score sheet and it took them uh, nearly four minutes to do that. Yeah, the key for me though, Dave, is the Giants are banging on the door right now. You know, you look at where clubs are at this point in the year and, and, and you know where can they get to and the Giants are banging on that door and they have to keep doing that uh, Leicester is the team that everybody needs to catch so you know going down there and you know could have could have done a better job as well I would say and you know coming close to a to a really good basketball team so you know things things looking good for this Manchester side Misses from both. Yeah, and Ogden Denby needed to make those. I mean, it's only two two points gone, but you know, he needed to steady the ship and get get an easy an easy two points there. And he missed out. Great cut and great pass by Clark, but great cut by Jack Hudson. Can't remember whether Jack actually did score on Friday night, but if he didn't, that's his three hundredth career league point. Is it? Oh, Artisan seemed to take too many steps on that one. Just, just lost his balance. The one guy who all these games will have benefited, Dave, is Dan Clark. You know, coming back from injury, you know, big player who's, you know, he's, he's very mobile for his size and can can read the game exceptionally well, but but needed to get back in the flow of basketball. So I think the consecutive games, you know, maybe three in just over a week would, would have done him, you know, the world of good. A nice seal by Jamal Anderson. You know, many guys coming across the paint there would have come all the way across the block even further out and Jamal able to hold his man off so that when he caught it, he was right at the rim, and, and of course, when Dan Clark has the ball, the ball will always be delivered on time. Yeah, ended up well there, ended up a good shot. Yeah, nice shot by Thomas, and the, the, there's a big load on this guy tonight, Dave. Thomas, Thomas, Olga Dengby, Jules and Cordo, uh, and you know Macklemore have a big responsibility here to get going. You know, you know Raftopoulos can make shots, but these other guys have to set the tempo. What a great look by McKnight! Great feeding again to uh, Clark this time. Cross court, out of court. Yeah, and great call by Neil McKelvey on this on this line. We saw that all the way as Raptopolis thought, I'm not out of bounds, and looked down, and there he was, stood out of bounds. Talking about referees, I was uh, here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, the coach 
got a technical and the umpire said a referee rather said I gave it you because you put your, hand, your head in your hands <laughs> well at least he explained I mean talking to these guys Kev Kinsella, Gavin Williams and you know Neil McKelby before they came they, they always want to come and talk basketball and I think it's great that you know you have refs coming in here really looking forward to the game and uh, it's something that you know it's a it's a player's game but you know the refs have a lot to play in that in terms of how they manage these guys and you know uh, McKelvey and co have you know a very good understanding with both players and coaches so timeout call by the Surrey Scorchers the Giants go up 14 points to two in the first four minutes of play so Gino Artisan with uh, five early points Dan Clark with four, McKnight with three, Hudson with two, and uh, just the two from uh, the Surrey Scorchers from Thomas. Yeah, no secret, Dave, that Surrey need help. You know, they're, they're down three guys and three very influential players. Yes, missing Davis, Hamrick, and Ringer. And I was very impressed with Ringer in the last game. Uh, I think that was only his second game for Surrey, and it's certainly a very strong presence in that game. Yeah, and and, and a tough guy too. I mean, I, I I think I think he's hurt his hand, and and you know, Coach Raftopoulos was saying, you know, he was willing to play. You know, his, his hand is banged up. You can tell by looking at the size of it that he's struggling. And and Coach was full of praise, saying this guy would have played if he could. You know, wanted to just come in and bang away and give it up for the team and you have to love that so you know feeling sorry for him right now that, that he's, he's not getting to play and it's it's a shame we're not seeing Stanley Davis Jr. either because uh, in that first game up here against the Giants I think it was the trophy he was a really strong influence in the series team got injured in that game and that in the end uh, possibly cost Surrey a chance to progress yeah a big a big miss a great player and, and uh you know, he's been sorely missed throughout many games this year. For me, Dang, Dang Akodo has to start attacking. You know, run the play by all means. But look, as, he's, as we speak here, he goes to the bucket, blows the layup, but he has to keep doing that. It's good to see him back on court. I mean, he's missed a lot of the season through injury as well, hasn't he? Yeah, and Artisan lines this one up and fires it in. That's, that's a dunk and two threes already by Artisan as, as he just gets goes from strength to strength he's really come alive in this the second half of the season hasn't he yeah i mean he can play dave and you know he's, he's had to be patient in terms of playing time you know but then when dan clark goes down and a few other guys mcknight goes home he's the guy that steps up and uh what a great, great pass. feet down blocks out though yeah what a pass by dan clark full court he'll be he'll be annoyed that jack hudson come finish on that play so <laughs> as he smiles and really but yeah going back to artisan you know he's been he's been great you know he really has defensively he was great in the first half of the season and still still is but offensively he's really coming to his own as you say dave okay so we have a foul line shot but we have to talk about josh Steele's sneakers you know that i believe they're converse uh, and i know he always wears converse but you know, a flamboyant guy who, who, you know, likes to express himself through his fashion. Uh, and I love that too. But, uh, you know, what what do you make of those, Dave? Certainly stand out. I mean, <laughs> he has to play well. So he Ste has to. Steele and Saunders on to replace Anderson and Hudson for the Giants. And Steele moving to point. So, different look for these Giants. Again, a great yeah. cut. And a nice pass by Will Saunders. And we're not going to say this too many times, but Will Saunders turning the open jump shot down and finding, you know, his boy McKnight for a, for a little easy two. Nice cut by Tay. Steel. 
Too strong. Yeah, nice ball movement from the Giants, though. An extra pass by Dan Clark and wide open Josh Thielen just comes up short. Could have been a nasty injury to Saunders, but up straight away from that. Slipping. Yeah, this doesn't look good for Surrey early on. You know, the ball seems to be sticking. It's not moving. You know, the, the Giants are playing well and the ball's moving from side to side, playing unselfish. Um, and it's, it's not looking good for Surrey. Lead up to 17. Jangakado. Yeah, and this is where you miss a Stanley Davis Jr. because he, he he could he could get the ball and make things happen. You know, he could bail you out of different situations. A bit similar to when McKnight. Wow! He's shaking his head. Uh, McLemore couldn't have played any better on that curl, right in his face, and no <laughs> has no effect on Big Shot Bill. Austin with the foul. Second foul. Yeah, going back to Stanley Davis Jr., you know, when McKnight left, you know, he was the closer at the time for the Giants. They found different ways to win when he was away, but, you know, you Surrey need a guy like that at the moment that can create, create and score and create for others too. So Whelan, Ulf and Anderson back in for the Giants. And Dean Wanless in for the scorchers. Yeah, and a nice move by Thomas. He's, he's been able to score twice. Very physical player who can, you know, score from on the block. And he'll look to continue doing so. Yeah. We've seen great ball movement for the Giants this evening. Too. And that is one guy that's come into his own during this year, Will Saunders, who's a... Uh, you know, for me, playing at, at the, you know, you know, an elite level right now, able to always able to knock down shots, but the energy he brings too is is, is phenomenal. This time it's Whelan who has a foot out of court. Yeah, Ken Kev Kev Kinsella on that one. He definitely stood out of bounds and just moved his pivot foot and, and stepped on the line. Yeah, good job by Dang Okodo. Those shots have to fall, but at least he's making things happen. Wanless with the foul on Saunders. I mean, Saunders is, Saunders is great in terms of, you know, the efficiency he plays at. He's on six points already. It seems like he's only just checked in. Offensive foul call against David Ulf. Yeah, the thing that he's he's used to, <laughs> he's, he's walking walking away, uh, agreeing with the ref. You know, David Ulf's always a good a good screener and roller, and just gets caught from a moving screen. Thomas. Yeah, nice job, Thomas. He's doing a good job. He's he's refusing to just die and, and, and he, he's at least giving him a shot. Oh, and that's inexcusable, you know. So Scorch is not knowing who they're guarding and you know, Mr. Simon, you know, inexcusable on defense. Nice little step from Teo. Yeah, and a nice finish too, and that'll do his confidence the world of good.
I think Josh Steele was lucky to pass off, then suddenly realised there was nobody standing in front of him. Might, might as well drive to the basket. Yeah, can he move by um, Josh Steele as he kind of bails himself out, like you say, I had nowhere to go, so lucky to be on the line. Steele hits them both. I've only been shooting 69.6 .6 from the line this season, so uh, good return from him from that visit. One less. Off to the left. Foul on Steele. His first foul. Yeah, just catches the hand. So, of course, this is the big game in Manchester tonight, but I think there is another game taking place. Do we have any updates on, on that one? There definitely is, and I'm, I keep getting I keep getting indication of the score, and I think, I think Man City and Liverpool are tied at one each at the moment. I think it's about half-time, Dave, or maybe going into the second half. So, Yeah, it should be half-time. So, yeah, 1-1 one, one at this point. So we end the first quarter with the Giants up 16 points, 31-15. You know, an all-star in this league, really, and, and he's sat on a bench, but other guys have played at times, and, and, you know, Coach Gardner's given them chance. He's given Josh Steele the chance to come back. He's he's let Will Saunders go at different points in the game, and uh, I think, you know, ev everyone's been valued on, on this Giants roster. And talking about giving players time, good to see Callum Jones on court. Yeah, and when you can leave your leading scorer, you know, till till kind of I know he's a, he's a bit older now, but till kind of one of one of the third point guards on the team, and when you can do that, you know, you you know guys guys are invested when he comes out and plays like he is. Yes, I would suspect that Armstrong's sitting down partly because of obviously he had a big game again on f Friday night. But more importantly, it is a very big game against Bristol on Tuesday, and he'll be wanting to make sure that uh, if there is a little niggle, that it doesn't get worse tonight. Yeah, and it won't do Tyreek Armstrong any any harm sitting even out this full game if it goes well. It won't it won't harm him because he's one of those players that's played you know a lot of miles on the clock, playing heavy minutes like you say, and you know it'll do him the world of good just to sit out one game. I'll feel. 582 points from Armstrong this season in all competitions. Yeah, Wanless just stepping across. He's right there, but just, uh, you know, Jordan Whelan catching the foot of Wanless and impeded his move to the basket. Wheeling with both from the line. Giants going into a zone, something they might use deep into the playoffs as a, you know, not a bad shot for Raftopoulos. He can make those, but, you know, Giants daring him to make one from long range and, uh, you know, working on the zone, something that, that maybe they'll use going down into the playoffs.
Foul called on Teo. Yeah, and I'd love to see that one back. It's a simple play and it's a foul, but, you know, I like seeing guys move without the basketball. You know, Will Saunders came from left to right and then he goes off a couple of screens and, you know, tough to guard as Teo gets caught up holding. Bit of a scrappy offence from the Giants that time. I think I'm right in saying this is Kalen's last season, isn't he? I think he's announced that he was uh, going to retire. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know, I know he was toying with the idea. Maybe, maybe I, don't, I don't know if he's announced that, but, you know, maybe he, um, he will step back from playing. I know he's heavily involved in the coaching. It's a big decision he'll have to make over the summer because what a lot of these guys, are, you know, have the, have the dilemma is, is they love the game, so... You know, sticking around and, and, and playing and playing at, at you know this level is a is a good thing, but also you have to take into consideration the other things they do around basketball. Alfred Saunders replaced by McKnight and the work basso. Yeah, immediate impact by Kingsley as usual as he inhales that rebound. Yeah, and Jordan will be mad at himself for that one because, you know, J Jamal Anderson running the floor could have thrown it earlier but was still in his mind to throw it and just went with the 50-50 play and it didn't come off. So, Dave, uh, Grand National yesterday, any, any winners for you? Uh, no, I, w I did manage to get home in time to watch it. I was uh, working yesterday as well. So, okay. uh, no, good race. Yeah, I mean, all credit to the, to the winner. Um, and I, and I know he was an amateur, but a very experienced amateur. But uh, good to see the story. Yeah, definitely. Sport is full of stories like that. You know, we look at things happening in basketball, football. All kinds, and I think if you're a sports fan in general, you love to, you love to hear, you know, stories like that. Unfortunately, Dave, I didn't win again, which is a sore point in our house. At the Did moment, your horse make it round? I, I think so. I think so. I, I maybe without a jockey at some point, but yeah, it did. I know nothing about the world of betting, so you know, it didn't really influence me in any way. Yeah, the tough thing that Surrey have to deal with as well is that, you know, you see McLemore, who's a very, very good defender picking up McKnight, but he's going to have to do it for, for you know, another, another, you know, 23 minutes. And that's a tough ask. You know, whereas if they had guys off the bench, they could throw a few different guys at different players, but Surrey don't have that luxury tonight. Knight for three from the corner. Yeah, an agent zero hiding in the corner there. You know, just defense just lost him for a split second. And you know with McKnight, you're going to pay the price. In the play earlier, we saw, Mc, I think it was McKnight changing the three-point shot. Is that something we should be doing or should we have learned our lesson from the Glasgow game? <laughs> Good hands by Whelan, and just to get the ball. Yeah, and getting a little bit excited with that dribble, Jordan, but, you know. Oh. Call for the offensive foul. And that'll kill him, because he was he was Harlem Globetrotters, Dave, at the, at the mid-court, and then 
you know, barreled into the defence. And uh, such a strong player is Jordan Whelan. So any contact that comes, it, you know, it does it does throw that defender off. You know, he's got upper body strength. He, he creates contact very well. And, you know, all, always a danger of getting those calls made against you when when you move the defence like that. Arson back on to replace Whelan. Dean Wanless sits down for the Scorchers. Yeah, foul on the floor and a good look from Deng and Cordo. And a nice move by Thomas there and a good catch from the big man. So Jules Deng Cordo is is seemed to uh, bounce around to quite a few teams and uh He's one of the guys who, as he makes a nice pass there, he's one of the guys that would uh, would benefit from from those other guys being in the team. He's a great defender. He can come in and, and give you seriously good minutes, um, and but he's having to do a lot more than than he would usually have to do. I think Kamradi is saying he started with the Phoenix this season. Yeah, and he's just come up with a really good defensive player, so he's, he, he's playing well at the moment. He's he's creating for others he's, he's making things happen off that ball screen and uh you know defensively he's always going to be competing yeah good job kingsley banging away this is a this is a great game for him because he's he's going against thomas who's all physical and you know, Kingsley is the same sort of player. Uh, doesn't play as much, and Thomas, you know, more aggressive in the post. But you know, th this is a good matchup for Kingsley Nwagbaso. Jones and Anderson sitting down, replaced by Steele and Hudson. Coach Gardner rotating his bench um, frequently, and you know, at good time, so ev everyone is getting to play. Well, there was a time he couldn't miss. So unable to slot it home, but uh, Giants come back with the ball. But already moving up to like three or four rebounds. He hasn't been in the game long and, you know, he's competing at every ball on the glass. And that's what he's in there for. And a good catch. Nice pass from Jack Hudson and good catch by Kingsley. And regains his balance and scores with the left. Nice play by those two. No look pass, but uh, I don't think the passer really wanted it. No, I think he did. I think he ran. He outran his defender. He got himself into good position, and you know McKnight sent to a float that basketball. You know where he needed a, just a, a quick pass into him, and it was a sure dunk. But just overcooked it, McKnight, on that one. Five rebounds from Kingsley. Yeah, and he seems to get every single ball that goes off and you know, doing a great job limiting the Scorchers to one shot. Nice pass, Josh Steele. 
Yeah, beautiful ball movement. And Jack Hudson, as every, every good point guard does, knows what's on the shot clock and enough time to give that extra pass and find Josh Steele for an open three. You see, Mike Lamar has to shoot that ball for me. You know, he's capable of scoring and, and he's dependent on, you know, you, you might not get a better shot in this offense. And rightly so you don't. You have Rolls Tyson who, you know, he's having to shoot a fadeaway jumper with someone flying at him. So, for me, McKnight has to shoot that ball. Sorry, McLemore has to shoot that ball. Foul on Rolls Tyson. No Basso replaced by Ulf. Rolls Tyson. Replaced by Ogundembe. Yeah, I think Artisan trying to go to the line and uh. You know, Macklemore talking to one of his guys and, you know, just a little bit of a coming together and, you know, cooler heads prevail as Teo and Denby stands in a way and calms things down. And replaced by Saunders. Yeah, nice move by Kale, and his defense seemed to just shift backwards as he comes from first into fifth and then drags it back and makes an open jumper. Great move by Kalen. Still find it hard to believe that it's only his 15 three-point shot of the season that's been successful when we've seen him be pretty much a dead-eye shooter for many, many seasons. Yeah, that surprises me, you know, able to catch fire at different points and I guarantee, you know, four of those will have come on, on, on the run. You know, he's that type of player and, and, you know, it's those guys that are having to do more than they usually have to do that's the problem for this Surrey team. Yeah, Jets. nice play and good patience there, you know. Jules... Had the ball at the top of the key, could have shot early and throws it to, you know, Teo was able to score and Ulf's great at that. I mean, how good is he and Jack Hudson together? We sound like a broken record, Dave. Every week we must talk about those two. Yeah, certainly great to see David Ulf out there after having to sit out the first half of the season. Yeah, it is, and, the, and the, you know, the, they, they're playing really well here at the Giants, and, and the, they're playing well collectively. So guys are like Dan Clark now, he's able to come back from injury and play good minutes, but, but able to get a rest. McKnight is going out. Armstrong doesn't look like he's going to play in this game. You know, Jamal Anderson is able to take a seat. These are guys that have played heavy minutes this year and will, it's a luxury to be able to sit them down at this point. Bit of pinball as the ball bounces all over the place. Teo in the corner. 
Four on two. What do you reckon, Will? Let's this one fly, Dave. Yeah, he's kind of lucky that was called out of bounds because if not, it would have been a hook. You know, good defense by, by Thomas there stepping across and maintaining his position. And Jack Hudson could have been called for the hook, so lucky for him he stepped out of bounds. Ganny Cliff had been on court for the Scorchers. Timeout called though by the Surrey Scorchers. 18 point lead as we into the dying seconds of this first half has been up as high as 22 but uh, so we have after that initial run where Giants went out to the, I think it was an 18 point lead have been able to to match the Giants uh, quite strongly in the the latter part of this uh, the second quarter and the dying minutes of the first quarter they have, and they've stepped up to the pace, no doubt. You know, they, they, they've improved since the first probably five minutes. But, you know, Lloyd Gardner will be ecstatic about the start that he's made because when you are playing teams at this point in the season who, you know, uh, no disrespect, but they're out of this playoff race. You know, that's a fact. But when you're playing teams like that, what you don't want is to give them life and give them confidence. You want them to kind of roll over and die. I'm not saying the Surrey Scorchers have done that, but the start that they made and the shots that they missed and how well the Giants played enabled them to get that 20-point cushion early on. So, you know, he'll be he'll be really pleased with how his team's come out today with Lloyd Gardner. Yeah, it be interesting to see how Garnercliffe plays. You know, a young player who, you know, hasn't played much this year and gets a chance now to, to show what he can do. Ball on steel. So he said it was a very high scoring first half, uh, first quarter from the, the Giants, 31 points. Second quarter, they've only managed 13. Yeah, I don't think that'll concern anyone. You know, 44 points in a quarter, maybe. Maybe can get a last shot off here to make it another basket, but, you know, 44 points is, uh, is fine. You know, you're heading towards, you know, high 80s in scoring. It's not a bad day's work. So, five seconds. Yeah, and still enough time to get a look here as Jack Hudson penetrates and, oh, just, just runs out of time. But So, Giants up by 17. Look, course, to Dave. You know, anyone who knows me knows... I'm a passionate Liverpool fan. I don't say that in Manchester much, but they've come back and it's 2-2, Dave, at the moment. So, you know, it's hopefully they get that third. And I guess there's about uh, 15 minutes or so to play in that game. Yeah. So, on to more important things. Clark back into the game. Nice little pass to Hudson, who... Uh, throw up and hope but uh, yeah nice nice cut by Hudson nice pass by Clark and he seemed to stick to the jersey of Hudson he just couldn't get couldn't get the ball up in any sort of fashion yeah and a good shot by Thomas I know it's late in the shot clock but I mean, you have to take those when you're open for this Surrey team to have any chance of getting this game back to respectability. Nice little turnaround. Doesn't make it. Nice little fake. Nothopolis 
Just losing control of the ball and Giants pick it up through Armstrong. Artisan. Yeah, and Dan Clark, if he gets this, will be able to finish it off, and he does. Fortunate for Artisan there as that ball went through, but nice to see him running the break and nice to see Dan Clark getting getting out there and getting the easy two. Up to eight points. No, Jamal Anderson will boom this one, Dave. Timeout called. Not sure what uh, Korean will want to, to talk over after just a couple of minutes playing. And, and only two points, uh, two baskets from the Giants. It's not as if they've raced away. Yeah, but, you know, you need, the Surrey Scorchers needed to come in and make a couple of shots early. Uh, to get things going back in their momentum and you know they started off the game poorly and and the Giants have, have come out and made a couple of easy ones you know and they, their turnovers that they've just gifted the ball to the Giants but I'm just, I'm just sat here looking at different players and I, I'm fortunate enough to talk to most players around this league and you know still have uh, you know the memories of playing against some but you know, Jamal Anderson, I love I love Jamal Anderson's whole demeanor. You know, I kind of wish I was like him in a lot of ways. He's so he's so well balanced emotionally, Dave. I'm watching him on this basketball court and it's like he's just oh well I'll pass, oh well I'll run, and then all of a sudden he gets open in the you know the open court and he he, he comes to life. He's just he's just a great personality to have on your team and I think he can only help other guys as well as play well himself and uh I just really love watching Jamal Anderson play. Well, there are any changes in uh, players during that timeout for either side? Summers. Foul by Artisan. That's his third foul. Yeah, and that won't worry things. I mean, let's have a look at it, see if he gets it up top. I mean, he gets a lot of body, too. You know, he does get the ball, but he does get a lot of body. And, and you know, a good job Thomas taking it at him, jab step against Clark and, and, and got a lay and he was gonna dunk that but Artism, you know, was having none of it. Thomas up to 12 points. Great pass by Jack Hudson. Oh, nice pass, Dan Clark. And that play seemed to mirror the one at the other end. The same two players involved of Artisan goes to dunk the ball and, you know, Thomas comes across and, and gives a customary foul. The same same at the other end, but nice pass by Dan Clark. I love how Jack Hudson does that along the baseline, Dave. If you notice, he's always heads up and he's always looking for little seams that he can deliver that basketball and he does a very good job at that. One from two from both the visits to the line. Oh, nice artisan. Oh, wow. Nice. Wow. Nice. Looked like he was going to dunk it and then floated underneath and kiss the ball off off the glass on the other side beautiful play by Gino Artisan oh tough shot by Kalen yeah it looked like he'd lost control of it but yeah, Jack licked Hudson, it up Jack Hudson was right there I thought he was going to block it so a nice nice finish oh good move Jamal Anderson as he huffs and puffs like he's expending too much energy Yeah, don't think it was too much difficult to call in that foul. That's the third one on Thomas.
Anderson with the two. He's the most successful three-point shooter from the Giants this season, averaging uh, around about 84%. Has he moved above Kingsley in the... Uh, yes, sadly Kingsley has slipped down an awful long way. Oh, he has. <laughs> that was unkind, Dave. Yeah, good defense by Anderson as Jack Hudson comes out running and delivers the ball for Artisan, who just unable to skip it to Jamal Anderson. Yeah, good move by Jack Hudson. Had nowhere to go really on that play. Sem sem like the Scotch has shut down the Giants' offense there, and just Jack was able to bail the team out and get to the line. A little bit of a late call, I thought. McKnight replaced by Steele. I like how Thomas has played. Really like the intensity. He's come out, he's banged, he's been physical, he's, he's, he's taken his chances, he's upped his game. Love how Thomas has played today, even though Surrey is struggling. 14 points from him. 14 points and on three fouls too, so... So, you know, you need him out there, you need him to stay out there and uh, keep banging away, so he'll have to not pick up any anymore in this quarter. Well, not the lou uh, largest crowd we've seen here this season, but certainly a very noisy one. Yeah, I think the Manchester Giants have done a good job of filling this building this year. There's been, you know, games where you can't see a seat on that on that opposing stand, and it's like it seems about 80% full today. So, you know, not not bad from the Manchester Giants on and off the court. Nice play by Josh Steele. Clock for three, not this time. Yeah, and Kalen trying to shoot his way back into this game, and, you know, why not? You know, let it fly and, and see what you can get. Anderson from the corner. Yeah, and Surrey's shaking their head, because Jamal Anderson can make make those but doesn't always uh, come out and look for that and you know if he's firing away knocking them down it's it's bad news for any team yeah frustration foul by Mac Lamore there you know it's been a it's been a long afternoon for him and no, it misses on the little short jump shot and then and then just just hacks his 
Hacks Will Saunders out of frustration. Yeah, I'm not actually sure that got him on his arm. <laughs> Must have got him on his arm. He missed. Still winded, I think. Did well to keep that ball in, in court. Yeah, and even better, and even better to, to get the ball in court, but just to, just to come up and make a play. You know, Jamal Anderson definitely fouls in the three as he walks away. But um, yeah, good job by Thomas. left on the floor and uh, he didn't see whether he felt and banged his head then when he came down no I think it, I think it's a knee to knee Dave I think he cut down the lane and as you see Dang Accordo you know I'm sure you'll see Callum coming up a bit hobbling there I think it was either ankle or a knee you know that he that he, he came up with yeah it's knee to knee yeah. so uh, we can watch it back right here. No, maybe turn his ankle, maybe hit his knee, I'm not sure, something down there. But Danga Kodos came up limping as well. So, unfortunate for Callum, only just came into the game and then uh, you know, has to go sit back down. But he doesn't look too bad. He's walking over and maybe just a, a little bit of a twist. Anderson also sits down. And this is, the, I mean, that's, that is the luxury of Dan Clark. He's such a finesse player. We've seen him put the ball on, you know, on a dime for so many guys to score up and layups. And there he is just wearing his guy down. Such a big player and so agile. See, that's what I was talking about earlier, Dave. Dan Accordo had, had one at the at the point, and he was wide open. He slowed the game down, and he ends up taking a shot three feet further outside. You know, they're not getting good looks. If you get if you get one, you must take it. You must take it with confidence and and live with the consequences. Because you know, there's not too many open shots coming for this Surrey team right now. Yeah, I think that is largely due to the fact he, he hasn't played an awful lot this season, isn't it? I mean. Uh, you're not used to taking those shots. Raftopoulos replaced by Ganiklev. Okay, you're not used to taking those shots. Maybe, maybe we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But you know, you, I agree. I mean, you have to take them. Yeah. yeah, read the room. You know, yeah. you, you must take that open shot. Wanless has done a good job coming in. He's missed a couple of threes, but he's always a positive influence on the floor. Nice move, Jack. We learn. Yeah, and there, there's a case in point. You know, Jordan comes up short, but it's a good shot. You have to take them. You know, nothing worse as a point guard than creating a shot for one of your teammates. He's been great, Dave. Creating a shot for one of your teammates who turns it down and it's wide open, and then you have to create another one. 
but great move by Thomas there. I've been really impressed with, with this young fella. Well, I think Ulf did everything he could not to commit the foul, but still uh, given against him. I don't believe you will ever, ever say that again, Dave, that Ulf did everything he could, could not to commit a foul. Gets the rebound. Quiet night on the boards for him tonight. That's only his second rebound. I'm hoping to see Kingsley Dwag Bosso come in and, and play. I'm sure Lloyd Garner will get him in early in the fourth. He did a good job. You know, especially on the offensive and defensive glass. <laughs> maybe a foul if it is it's the first one they'll have got around let's have a look at this as David Ulf goes up yeah he's definitely pushed and then he's hit yeah you'd also have to say that he was <laughs> holding the ball as he was knocked out of court so I'm not quite sure where is a Giants ball good defence by Teo and Denby there had a hand right in Jordan Whelan's face Foul on Saunders. It's his first foul, but it's the fifth foul on the Giants, so Surrey will go to the line. <laughs> Raftopoulos in, replacing Dan Gakodo. You know, and this game's kind of just gone along in the second half would you say Dave in this third quarter you know it doesn't seem to have been you know we're talking about a 16 point differential now and the guy that's kept it ticking over for me has been Thomas he's, he's been assertive he's he's given them a little hope and, and stranger things have happened you know if they can perhaps get this to a you know maybe a stop and a score here you know and it's get this back to like 14 point game you know you, ne you never know yes sir he actually Leading in this third quarter. Yeah, so two for one opportunity. If Surrey go early, they, they have a two for one opportunity. So, you know. Yeah, one good, good shot by one. It's st still a good shot. You're capable of making those. And. You know, at least Surrey should get the, the, the last shot. There we go. I'm waiting for the ball, but Jack Hudson decides to go by himself. It's fouled. First foul on Ganny Cliff. Yeah, so Tay Ogan Demby has to have the ball for me now and he has to make something happen. Here we go. Nice pass. Oh. Did all the hard work, but one was not able to slot it in. Yeah, Wanless has been a live wire. He's he, he's come in, he's he's moved, he's made shots and should have should have put that one down. A great pass by Teo and still time to get a shot up. So, end of the third, Giants 60, Surrey scorches. So, Dave, the team's playing well going into this uh, 
you know, going into this kind of postseason, the team's playing well. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd be wary of Sheffield. I think they're an excellent basketball team and they seem to have got it going at the right time. Bristol is another team that seems to have got it going. Nice shot by McLemore. Uh, and, and the Giants seem to have, have got going as well. So, you know, those three teams, let, let, let's look at Leicester and don't go anywhere else yet because, you know, these, these are the big dogs in the league of Leicester right now. But, you know, those other teams, it's, it seems to me like, you know, London's been a, been a mystery day. What? Yes, of course, uh, since they last played here, change of coach again. Oh, nice pass by McKnight. Yeah, look, they seem to have, you know, they had they had Vince McCauley as, as coach. Good shot by, by McLemore there, but Vince McCauley was coach, doing a good job. And then, you know, they, they changed direction, went with James Veer, who, who started off really well. And then things didn't go according to plan really and, th and then they get another coach in and it just seems like a, a very dis disjointed season for that basketball club um, I'm not sure how that works but you know definitely uh, one of the teams that should be up there doing well and uh, you know I'm, sh I'm sure they'll they'll bounce back uh, next year but definitely a mystery as to why they haven't they haven't played very well this year and of course, we get to see the London Lions here for the Giants' final home game of the uh, the league season. Yeah, and watch London Lions come back and and say, "Okay, well, well, here we go. We we're, we're still a good basketball team, and come here and win." Nice little roll. Yeah, suddenly realised how strong he was, and just. Took one power move and laid it up. Nice move, Kingsley. One listen. Acres of space, but can't convert the three. Once again, Giants struggling to find the baskets. Two and a half minutes, and only two points scored. Yeah, McLemore's done a nice job as uh, as Coach Gardner puts uh, Artisan and, and Anderson back in. You know, I like Jordan and Pippin coming back in. I don't know if I'll get um, get a bit of stick for that one, but I mean, defensively, those two guys. You know, seem to seem to be right there, so we'll we'll stick with the John and Pippin for now. But but yeah, uh, McLemore's done a great job in this this last I'd say six minutes. He's he's tried to get to the bucket. He's taken shots, and that's what they've needed during this game. So if he makes these thirteen point game, all to play for. Shooting 90% from the line tonight. That's nine from ten for McLemore. Yeah, and a good defensive possession by by Surrey. You know, Kalen Raftopoulos is controlling the basketball. Whelan takes an off-balance shot and they rebound in committee. So, good job by Surrey. One less again, looking for the three. Off to the <coughs> left, but the rebound picked up by McLemore, who now moves to uh, 14 points, I think. Yeah, I think Teo, Teo Ogan Demby was the guy no, with the 12. putback. Ogan Demby was the guy with the putback. Oh, no, sorry, yes. McKnight yeah. scores, but, you know, Lloyd Gardner hooking and puffing and holding his head in his hands as 
Surrey have stormed back and was at 11 now now to 13. This is their best option. Give the ball to this guy and let him make things happen. Nice pass. You know, Teo Dembi is capable of scoring. He's capable of scoring in the post. He can make open threes. He's got the smaller McKnight on him. Give him the basketball. Yeah, and that was a, maybe an out one as he scores. Timeout scored. So Scorchers really back in the game now. Yeah, 11 points. <laughs> you know, everyone around shouting, let's go, Giants, like, like they're supposed to dominate on every single play. But the fact is, the Surrey Scorchers have not given up, Dave. No, actually, it's just down to a nine point. First time it's been in single figures since about the third or fourth minute of the game. Yeah. And, and like I said, Ogundembe scores in the block there. He's, you know, Jamal Anderson maybe move across to take him because he's been dominant whether he's been scoring or not. And, and for me, McLemore and Ogundembe have to keep attacking for Surrey. Hudson brings the ball back up court for the Giants. Anderson turns round, but short. Yeah, and there's life in this Scorchers team now. You know, they're, they're rebounding physically. You know, they're playing, playing hard on defence. You know, right there, they go back to this Ogun Denby matchup and see what, he, what, what he's got. Yeah, and it proves fruitful, and Manchester are going to have to do something about that because, you know, McKnight, who's so, so good defensively on the perimeter, is you know, ha got his hands full. He's undersized. Mclemore, foul by McKnight. <laughs> Yeah, and all of a sudden we have a ball game. So this third quarter, it's 4-13 uh, in favour of the Surrey Scorchers. Yeah, and I don't think any of us saw this coming. And, you know, Mike Lamar can step to the line and, you know, trim the deficit even more. But, you know, credit to... You know, Creon Raftopoulos, who's, who's you know, been coaching from every single minute, he's been on his feet, you know, trying to rally his troops, and, and you know, they, they've responded and, you know, make it, making this a game. So, six point game. Oh, tough break there for Surrey as, uh, you know, Dan Clark goes across and, you know, great block and then and then just bailed out with, with the foul. You know, and that adds another 14 seconds onto the shot clock. So, tough break for the Scorchers. A little bit more height now on the defence from Steele. And this is the respect for guys that Coach Lloyd Gardner has. You know, he's taken out McKnight, who's, you know, defensively had problems. And Josh Steele is coming into the game now to guard, I'm sure, Ogun Dengby, which is, is, is why he's made that change. Nice move by Jack to the left. Manchester, 
two very much needed points from the Giants oh what a move by Mike Lamar that was virtually impossible to get that basketball up up to 15 points But picks up his fourth foul. Yeah. Very nice little roll into the basket. Yeah, good move by Josh Steele. You know, change of direction and change of speed was an enabled him to get to the bucket and able to draw the contact. Good move. Thomas with his fourth foul. Yeah, and Thomas won't worry about that now. You know, doesn't want to pick up that um, fifth foul because rebounding will be a problem, but you have to just play at this point of the game. Second one goes in. The Giants have missed seven from the line this evening. Yeah, good ball movement from Manchester, just unable to finish. You know, they're trying to go back to that organ. Oh, trying to go back to that organ. Demby, and he's, he's been great, Dave. I mean, uh, he seems to have been in that basketball club for as long as I can remember, and he won't go down without a fight. And, you know, nice move by Teo. He's now on 13 points. Manchester. So, four point game, three minutes remaining. Blocked out, but able to get the ball back. Off balance shot oh, again. Anderson able to get the rebound. Good job by Jamal Anderson. Artisan. Oh, great shot by Gino Artisan. Steadies the ship with the three. It's his third three of the evening. Yeah, and those two guys again, Jamal Anderson on the glass, and then Gino Artisan strikes that one right down the middle. Great shot, Gino. And this there he time comes blocked up with a block. by Artisan. Two big plays. Anderson from the corner, hits wow. the three. And all of a sudden, we're back to double figures, 73-63, with just over two minutes remaining in this fourth quarter. Timeouts called by the Surrey Scorchers. So a great fight back by the Scorchers in this fourth quarter in particular. Uh, but 30 seconds of magic from the Giants, a couple of rebounds from... Artisan and Anderson, and then the three-pointer from Anderson, a block at the other end from the Giants. This is a big shot. Oh, was this the... This is earlier on. Oh, OK. This is Clark being blocked out. A nice layup by Jack there. Jack up to 99 points for the season. Yeah, and that's a big shot by Artisan as he looks over and you know lets the crowd know about it. And you know that, that is a big shot. Who who would want to be a coach, Dave? Lloyd Gardner over there, just <laughs> like holding holding his head and thinking, you know, 
I'm glad I've got Anderson and Artisan on my team because all of a sudden Surrey came back, got it to four, things started looking a little bit interesting and then, uh, you know, Art Artisan comes up with three and then Anderson turns the electric back on in this building and brings this crowd back to life. Well, it's not over yet. Yeah, the problem is, sorry, here, you're now going against Anderson. Raftopoulos. Ooh. You're now going against Anderson, who's probably one of the best, if the not best, defender in this league, and, and it's going to be tough to get your own shot against him. You know one thing about Jamal Anderson. I spoke earlier about his demeanour and, you know, how he was kind of looked like everything was an effort and and, and he's just, just that's the way he is. But, you know, cometh the hour, cometh the man. He, he, he always plays when you need him to. He always competes. He steps up at different times. If you can remember during the beginning of the season, you know, he was the guy that was coming out and offensively looking to attack and he just seems to be that glue guy that does everything that you need um, to help your team win. Four from four from the line. Artisan with his fourth foul. Was shooting 20% this evening from the line. But no mistake with those two. Yeah, and it's because he's rolling. He's had a couple of arm ones. He's been able to post up and kick it to open guys. And you generally feel good about yourself even when you get to the line. Continuation given. Yeah, nice move by Josh Steele, but you know Danga Kodo will will say that that ball is on the floor when he fouls, and then hey, hey who 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 knows? You know these guys are great reps and know the rules. Oh, what a finish. What a finish. Dan Clark must think, I'm, how much more defense do I have to play? You know, did a great job and was able to just fling that up and make it with his left hand. Thomas up to 20 points. Clark looks for three and oh, succeeds. So. Yeah, and Gino will bang this one. Yeah, and Gino Artisan with the windmill. I hope we can see that one more time. A phenomenal play. We spoke about Anderson and Artisan, and <laughs> there he is grinning in his body. You know, Art Anderson able to rip him and then give it to Gino, who comes up with the, with the windmill. Here we Let's go. See. Here we go. Great play by Gino Artisan.
You see, I knew it was worth mentioning he was on 99 points before because he's not going to make the 100 now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Tell a lie. 101 points to There you go. <laughs> So in the end, Giants run out winners 85 67. In the end, a comfortable margin between them, but certainly wasn't that three minutes ago when the margin was down to just four. <clears throat> Very spirited fight back by the Surrey Scorchers, led by McLemore, Ogden Denby, Thomas with 20 points, and uh, What looked like being a very comfortable victory in that first quarter seemed to be slipping away from the Giants. They were led by Gino Artisan finishing it off with that windmill and uh, 17 points. Anderson had 14 points, Clark 11.